Hey guys, welcome to the Chicago Auto Show, and we've got a very special episode because we've got a very special guest. We've got Moto Man. Roman, good to be back in your hometown. Yeah, it's been a year since we've done this, and in this podcast slash video, we're going to do a walk around of the show, but we're going to do something really fun. We're not going to talk about cars, but we're going to talk about the companies that build the cars because it's been a year since we've done that. So it's going to be the state of the industry as we see it. Yes, as of... February of 2024. Yeah, so and a lot of change since you and I got together and talked about this. A lot last. of change. And if you guys are interested in some of the best reviews out there, head on over to Moto Man TV, where Thank you, you will find Moto Man reviewing everything from GT3s to, to Rolls Royce Spectres, exactly to Hyundai's. All right, so let's start with Toyota because, dude, Toyota is on a roll. These guys I think are on fire. It. So we talked about this a little bit last year. I firmly believe that these guys have made the right step. As you guys have known and we've talked about for many years, EU and the US got together and said, we are making a mandate, 2035, you have to go 100% EV. Now, a lot of companies, they had no choice, the government's kind of ruled the roost, so they made the change, they keel-hauled the whole system, and they decided to change their product portfolio. General Motors in particular is probably the worst offender there. Toyota, they went something different. They said, okay, I'll tell you what, we'll give you one or two EVs here, but our future is plug-in hybrids and hybrids. And then people like us, I would argue the folks that don't know a lot about business, they said, Toyota's losing the way, They're, they've got to get with EV, they're going to go out of business. And in reality, now we look at the change of the world in just one year, and Toyota now not only is the strongest one out there, yes, because they got a lot of money, but their product portfolio is probably the most future-proof for the next five years. Yeah, and there's a couple of things I think that happened. First of all, like you said, uh, there was this push for EVs, and then there was, of course, the counter push against them, mm -hmm. right? And that's where Toyota comes in because they said, we're gonna stick with what we know best, which is our hi hybrids, but there's something else going on. This exemplifies all these vehicles, right? They really leaned into off-road. So you've got the new Land Cruiser here, mm -hmm. you've got the new uh, Toyota Tacoma. This I is believe, the Trail, trail Hunter. Hunter. You've got the TRD Pro over there, uh, you've got the Forerunner, and there's a new one coming. But they married their hybrid and plug-in hybrid technologies into off-road. Yes. Maybe not plug-in yet, but at least hybrid. Yeah, so they lean into the off-road, you know, they lean into electrification in a way that people are ready to accept. Like, this is a really good example. Here's the Sequoia. Unlike the Tundra, this is not available just as the 3.5 V6. It's only available as the hybrid, and at that it means that the, the, the grade walk, it's only available starting in the mid-grade. So this is a great example of what comp the company's been doing. You know what's crazy? Let's walk over to Ford. We'll hit that next. So I've been listening to a lot, I was listening to a lot of like EV podcasts. Yeah. And they hated Toyota, right? They were like these Absolutely. guys are they're going out of business. They're are stupid. the devil? They're, yeah, they're going out of business. And now when you walk into the show, you hit their booth first. They've got kind of the most excitement around all their products, uh, and you know they're poised to just have a banner year. So those podcasts, I got to ask yeah. you, were they not only crapping on Toyota? But were they also crapping on Akio Toyota? Both. Okay, right? so... Because they felt like he was like an old guy who was out of touch. I feel like he is kind of like the godfather. <laughs> okay. So, do you remember when Vito kind of stepped back and let Michael take over yes. and Michael was moving the, the, the whole of the five families forward? I feel like that's what Akio Toyota is doing. He said, okay, you guys want to crap on me in the public? My name's on the door. I don't care what you say, but I'm going to come out of the public eye. He steps out of the public eye and he raises the guy from Lexus. He's now running Toyota, so he has to take the bullets from the press. Yeah, because look, they came out, you know, he's, he obviously loves sports cars, right? But he's still pull, holding the strings. Right, right, right. So he came out with the GR series, right? There's, uh, there's the Corolla. Yaris, there's a Corolla, Absolutely. right? And the new Prius, I mean, it's so sexy. Where's our Prius? Yeah. The uh, Prius, Prius, Prius is, Prius over here we, we just saw it, it was yeah. here. Uh, no, the crown. Oh, no, that's a crown. Not sure about, much I'm not sure about the crown. But so, oh, there it is. Prius yeah. is over there. Yeah. So while we're walking over yeah. there, can I give you an idea of how it's changed? So you, you guys know, it's a shameless plug. I'm part of a, a an organization that like votes for cars of the year. It's world called car World of Car of the Year. Of the year. Yeah. So it's made up of a hundred jurors around the world. Only 18 are from the U.S. And believe it or not, this is up for contention of World Car of the Year. And of the hundred people that are part of this, all of us are saying the same thing. We're like, I can't believe how good looking this thing is. Yeah, I mean, look at this. It's, it, it took what is, you know, the poster child for stodgy hybrid yeah. Prius, right? I remember a video where like Clarkson actually shot it up with, from Top Gear, yeah. shot it up with a machine gun. And now you've got this car that dare I say is one of the sexiest cars you could 
find at this auto show. And one of the fascinating things, and I think this is a bigger theme going on here than just EV versus plug-in hybrid and ICE, let's say, I don't know if this one's the basic, this is not the basic car, this one's got some equipment on it, but the basic car, so no panoramic sunroof, no leather seats, but still Apple CarPlay, power windows, all that kind of stuff, it's 27,000 US. Yeah. For a car that gets 60 MPG and is bulletproof reliability, there's nothing else close. Yeah, we just did a very similar walk around with Andre, who's behind the camera, thank you Andre. Hello Andre. On trucks, if you wanna see that, go to altfl.com, where we did a, a, a walk around looking at trucks that are bargains or budget busters, right? Yeah. This is a bargain. A be, beyond a bargain, bargain it's yeah. not just a bargain, it's a bargain that's good looking and will last for at least 10 years. Because yeah. when people, I don't know about with you guys, I'm sure you have ton of, tons of your users, hey Roman, what should I buy? I'm thinking this, this, or this. I always answer with three questions. Where do you live? What do you do with it? And how long do you want to keep it? If they say five or more years, there is only two answers. Honda, Toyota. That is yeah, it. Good question. How big is your bank account? That would be another good one. <laughs> 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 now, uh, Toyota, of course, also, here's the sports cars we were talking about, the GR Corolla uh, and the Yaris in Europe. Um, Toyota also has the best-selling car in America, which is the RAV4. Yes. They sell like over 400 Used to be the Camry. Yeah. Uh, but let's point out this before we move on from Toyota. I think this is a great example of kind of what they're trying to move forward with with a new product portfolio. So this is a brand that they've taken from Japan. They've expanded it now more into the U.S. And here they've adapted it to, they like to call this thing an SUV, but in reality, I think Roman and I would agree it's locked. Um, this is a more of a station wagon. This is kind of like the anti-outback where you look at it, it's got the form factor of an Outback, meaning it's a high station wagon, but it doesn't have all that body cladding. But most importantly, this is a hybrid. So here is, a, probably it's gonna be $60,000. So you got a $27,000 Prius, and now a $60,000 competitor, let's call it 50 to 60, to an Outback. You know what I figured out? I was just in Japan for the motor show there, right? Yeah. And uh, in Japan, of course, their demographics are older than ours. And what they figured out was that they can take a sedan, like the regular Crown, which I think is over there, and they lift it, yes. right, and just make it taller so that us old guys, I'm not pointing you, I'm pointing Him. me. He have, is the old man in have, the group. Have an easier time getting in and out of it. So in yes. Japan, they kept sedans, but they made them taller, and now they're bringing them here, whereas we, of course, went to crossovers and SUVs. So do you, okay, I think this is our first question of many that we're gonna throw out to the audience. All right. Do you guys think that is a, of value here in the U.S. and B, has it been successful? Because we've had the Crown hatchback for a year now. Yeah, I think, I I think, think that's so. a question for the audience, not for you. Well, we'll let you answer it. Okay. Fair enough. All right, so let me show you Ford here. I think here you have the perfect example of where Ford is at. You've got three vehicles. <laughs> this got, is the perfect example. Is, you've got the Lightning, you've got the Mustang. GTD. The, and you've got the Maverick. So this, this is kind of exemplifies Ford. And what I mean by that is when the Maverick came out, right, you could, $19,000 for a compact truck. People are still waiting for theirs, right? They, they just, they just a had- A friend of ours took a year and a half to get hers. Yeah, just, just like, you know, just out of the ballpark, smash hit, along with the Bronco, right? They had all these great cars. Yeah. And then they said, you know, we're gonna take, not millions, but hundreds of millions, and we're gonna invest it into an all electric Ford F-150. And literally like, incinerate hundreds of millions of dollars. Which we own, and it's a good truck. Great truck. But you know, you gotta be on the right part of the curve, right? Sometimes being early is just as bad as being late. So you know what, I just did an episode on this. Yep. Of, is it, does it pay to be the, 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 the guy who is the first mover advantage, or does it pay to be the guy that's coming to the party late? And the two examples I gave was General Motors, and Tesla on the first advantage, first mover advantage, and the second one was BMW. So you look at Tesla, they invented it. So I don't want to call them a car company, they're a technology company, that's why they've been True successful. That. There are many reasons why. We can cover that in a separate episode. However, General Motors, and you look at some of the others that have gotten into it early, a lot of missteps, a lot of cost overruns. They obviously have not right-sized the demand, so now there's tons of these things on the lot. They're not over, over market anymore. But BMW, they kind of sauntered into the market. They came late. We're going to give an example at the end of this episode, a really good example of BMW group. But what they've done is they said, you know what? We don't have the finances, because we're a smaller company, to lose like Ford has here that much or invest that much money. So they said, how do we make a BMW EV that's a BMW first, and then an EV second, and then applied it to Mini, and then applied it to Rolls Royce. And I would argue that the best driving EV out there, full stop today, 
is the i4, and is that the cheap one? Icon. Because it's the only, nope. The, I'll tell you why. Icon. The i4, you can steer it with your right foot. All right, let's, keep, okay, let's keep talking about Ford. So this is fundamentally a great truck. I love yeah. this truck. The problem is it's just under battery. Right. Okay. If you're going to tell, as you proved, home. yes, as we proved <laughs> when we drove it up to Alaska, right, Andre? Yep. He's <laughs> the only one that comes up with these hairbrained ideas <laughs> and makes Andre do it. Hey, I, I did the hard part. I went from Fairbanks up to. I saw a video of him camping in an EV. Yeah. Well, he did. He, so anyway, this the GTD is. I don't know, dude. This is such a hair, such a head scratcher for me. And I'll tell you why. Right. I feel like this is Farley. Absolutely. Right. Who's the CEO of Ford? I think this is. But I don't know if Ford should be competing with Porsche. Okay, I mean, so I, th I, think, I think Ford, you know, has the Mustang, and the Mustang is the every man, woman, sports so car. So I would but argue, this, really this? I would argue this is, Why don't this you is the, walk around, yeah, it's let's beautiful. Walk around. Yeah, it's absolutely gorgeous. It's a stunning car. It is. I would argue this yeah. is the Accio Toyota moment for Ford. Okay. Farley, this is his, like when we talk about Accio Toyota wanted the GR Corolla and the GR Yaris, this isn't just, hey guys, I had this idea, go make it happen. Accio Toyota literally was leaning on the chief engineer of those cars and helped him engineer the car. So we should tell him what Farley's this is. Farley's the same, okay, so this is, yeah. okay, this is not a Mustang. No. <laughs> I think that's the first thing to say. It's the a best race way car. to describe this, this is a GT3 RS with a Mustang body on it. So basically, you have a V8 instead of a flat six in the back, the, the V8's in the front. It's got a rear transaxle. The car is made like the Ford GT. It's not an American car, it's a Canadian car. It's made by Multimatic, yeah. who is big in racing. Basically, what you guys know Multimatic as, they make incredible dampers for the racing world as well as the off-road world. Yeah, they do. Um, so this car was envisioned, I would argue, by Jim Farley, and the point was, let's try to outdo the Germans, and, and Andre, we can see some of the parts here. Here's the transaxle, so the carbon tra fiber drive shaft. Tra transaxle is a, uh, just a fancy way of saying that the transmission's in the rear, giving a better weight, weight distribution. distribution. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so instead of having it, you know, bolted up against the power And train. then show them, Andre, show them the front suspension, the double wishbone front suspension. All of this is lightweight aluminum, some of the exotic materials and the dampers that are used. Again, this is this is why I call it not a Mustang, but I would argue this is a flex, excuse the pun, for Ford. Yeah. And it's the idea of, hey, we're Americans, we can do what you Germans do and we can do it. Yeah, I agree. Better. So I think the Europeans have an incredible bias against American sports cars, right? They think they think that we're all about muscle and we can't build a car that goes around a corner. And so there's kind of this conception that if you want, you know, the the perfect balance of yeah. sporting. You got to go with Porsche or you got to go with some of the other brands. And I, I agree with that, but I'm just not sure that the company that builds the Explorer should yeah. be building that. That's 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 all I'm saying. I, I, don't, I, I may be wrong, but Porsche does Porsche. Why is Ford trying to do Porsche? Because what that is, is a Porsche 911 race car competitor. I'm going to pick that up. I'm going to go in a little bit of a different direction. Let's keep walking. Yeah. Let's keep walking. Yeah. Okay. Which direction do you want to go in? Where let's do you go, want to go Let's go over to Hyundai next. Okay. Yeah. So while we're going over to Hyundai, let's talk in a bit of a direct, different direction for Ford. This is a theory. Yeah. So basically what I'm about to tell you and what is it now? 275 gets you on the New York City subway. Okay. So Ford was the first one to say we're getting rid of cars and we're going to go all... And that was smart. That was smart. I didn't like it, but that was smart. They also did turbos, right? In the... They were... Also, not, that's not a smart because it's basically a game. You're, you're doing the three-card Monty thing. You show these great MPG numbers, but you and I both know the minute you put your foot into a 3.5, it becomes an eight-cylinder. Yeah. Anyway, but that's not what we're talking about. Yeah. So here they are. They're, they're years now into this whole business of being a truck company, an SUV company, a crossover company. And I feel like Farley took over and said, we need to show some car cred, car street cred, because we only have one car at this point. And I don't, the, the problem I have with that car, as much as I love it and I want one, yeah. none of that will trickle down to production Well, the GT production cars. certainly didn't trickle down. To none production. of it. Uh, We're in a yeah. Porsche, as, and, and you know I'm very close to Porsche. The, everything from GT cars, most of it trickles so down, down yeah. into the actual point. regular cars. So why is That's the only problem why I have with it. Because that cost-wise, yeah. you saw the tramp, you're not going to put that into a regular Mustang. So I don't want to get in uh, Rady's uh, shot Let's here. Let's get into Rady's shot. <laughs> I, I think we should. I'll let him crawl through there. I mean, this have is you a, seen Rady's shirt? I have. It, uh, yeah. 
I called a, I called him an aging golf pro. Sorry, sorry, Randy. Love you. Just, we love you. We, we really do. You. So this is actually new, he's a Ford guy, isn't he? He's a Ford guy. He's yeah. a major Ford. This, guy. this is the new Santa Fe, and I would say that this exemplifies what Hyundai does, which is reinvent their cars they do it every the like two years. Yeah. I was going to say four, but it's like every two years. Well, they've changed. Have you noticed? They used to be what's called a fast follower, meaning they would come up with a design and that copies something else. And now what they're doing is they're setting a trend. Now I would argue some of the lines you see with this thing definitely come from Range Rover, but they've adapted it in their own way, their own proportions. The only thing I think is not successful, the back end. It's so strong in the front, it's so weak in the back. So you, you, can, there's, you can say a lot about Jerry McGovern, who's the lead designer for Land Rover, yes. right? But the Defender definitely set the tone for Absolutely. everything. I mean, including Toyota, right? Now, Everybody's trying to be a Defender. Everybody's now squaring all their cars off. We've gone from that kind yeah. of bulbous design language to these much more uh, geometric shapes. I'll give you a little advance notice on this one because I've actually had the opportunity to drive this car already. Yep. Um, number one, the build quality on the inside. I don't want to get into his shot here, but what you can see here, Andre, show them this. Now, granted, this is the upmarket car, but even with the cheaper car, the build quality, the tactile feel of all this stuff is now a couple of steps higher. So this is what we're talking about, trends of car companies. What they're doing is they're going back into the finer details now that they've brushed the broad strokes. And the second, remember the previous Santa Fe? Lovely, you know, good value, but was it a good driving car? No. This, believe it or not, now has great ride quality. Yeah, I think what both Hyundai and Kia discovered with the Palisade and the Telluride, because both of those had like long waits for them, is that you could do really, really well mm -hmm. by building really great cars mm -hmm. that feel like they're luxurious and yet at a price point that is affordable for most, right? Yeah. But people, they, I think originally they banked on the idea of, let's take the money out of the rear suspension and give you heated seats in the back. Yeah. Now they're like, you know what? We'll give you the heated seats and we'll give you the better suspension. All right. You can always tell what one of the most important cars is for the car company by where they put it at the Absolutely. show. And here is the brand new Trax, uh, which is, you know, uh, GM's kind of interesting entry into affordable both EV, right, because they're making them in two versions. Mm -hmm. They're making it as an EV and they're making them as a gas-powered car. Uh, and I think it's handsome, you know? Oh, I think it's a great looking car. Yeah, I car. think it's a good looking car. I think I, and you job. know me, I am not a practical human being, but that is, forget that it's 23 grand. Yeah, I know, it's that's crazy. That's a damn good looking car. Yeah. And the other car that's based on the same platform, the Buick, stunningly beautiful. Yeah. Like, uh, I mean, you, you guys know that Roman is from Chicago here. I, I forgive him for that. <laughs> I am from the greatest pizza, city in the world. We can have a pizza argument now. They don't have pizza here, they have quiche. We call it pizza. It's thin. Pizza wait, is wait, not thick. Wait, you, you, you have cardboard with like some vegetables and pepperonis. That's the way God intended. <laughs> anyway. All right. So I have these friends. Yeah. And they're hipsters. They're much cooler than us. Yeah. You know, my buddy Mike, he's married to like the real Carrie Bradshaw. Like, yeah. She's super attractive okay. and hip and, has, and she works for South by Southwest to give you an idea how okay. cool yeah. she is. All right. All right. Well, guess what? What? She now drives a Buick. Yeah. That's how cool the car is now. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, uh, Chevy has kind of had a, uh, GM has kind of had a, a stop-start relationship with electrification, right? So... You should give them the full story on this, on the problem with this what, car. What is oh, the this? Is the this is the Equinox. The Blazer is the one that's got the problem, the yeah, stop oh, yeah, sale. Yeah, well, we had one, and it actually did really well for us. Um, <laughs> ironically, we didn't have any of those issues, but obviously they, they were real yeah. because everybody else had them. But what I mean by stop-start is, like, like, you're not sure whether they are in the electric pool, mm -hmm. in the shallow end, in the deep end. I, I just don't know, right? It, it feels well, like they're, they're, they're pulling back just like Ford is pulling back. So we're, um, you, you know I'm, I'm fascinated by the business of our industry. Yep. I feel like this is an industry unlike others because if you take any other industry, you lot, add a lot of zeros and that's the car industry. Same could be said about the aviation industry. But they just had the earnings call for General Motors last week. Yep. And Mary Barra, who um, is the CEO of the company, she was very clear that they are stepping back from EVs. They'll continue to have the stuff they have out now, but what they're doing is they're going to rush to market. That's the term she used, plug-in hybrids and hybrids. The um, product roadmap that she showed, or shared, I should say, uh, was a lot of backfill from what used to be Daewoo, which is where that tracks comes from. And then they're going to start making the new cars you see coming out. They're going to do what BMW does, where they make a platform that can support electric, hybrid, as well as ICE. Because at the end of the day, the cars, the only cars that are selling for General Motors right now, 
is that tracks in the Buick Vista, and obviously the gas trucks from Dallas. Now, now here are two interesting car companies that are both kind of struggling, or I would say kind of lost in the woods. So let's talk about Volkswagen first. Yes, sir. I feel like Volkswagen, if there is a right decision or a wrong decision, they, they, tend, they tend to make the wrong decision. You know what I mean? So, uh, like, perfect example, ID Buzz, right? Yes. That's that's actually. I was listening to a podcast, uh, Sniff and Smith, by the you way. You listen to a lot of I podcasts. Do, I do. And they're actually. That's what dis- happens when you're old? They're discounting them in the UK. Yeah. We have yet to see one. That, I know. that is the hottest thing they could bring over, and yet for some reason they said, you know what? We don't want to bring the ID7 or rush it over here. I mean, we don't want to bring the Buzz, but we want to rush the uh, ID7. Like, like, which one's going to sell better? So. No. I would argue here this, this is going to sell better, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. And yet, yet, yet it's, it should have been here two years ago. I've driven the ID7. It is very disappointing. It, it's, a, it's, like a, it's like the crown. It's like a tall, hatchy but sedan. But the crown is good execution. That is not good execution. Let's get, actually, let's bring this discussion back up to the, 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 the top line, which is about the company. Yeah. I would argue Volkswagen's in this position because they are in a unique position because they got their, their hand caught in the cookie jar. So they got hit extra hard by the EU, they got fines, and bad public perception. You know, let's put aside what you think about the Dieselgate thing. So I, this is just me reading the tea leaves, I think they pushed harder into EV than other car companies, and they didn't hedge their bets. So their investments have been on this platform, MEB platform, that's underpinning everything you see here. But at the end of the day, the execution was rushed, and as a result, the vehicles are not good. So if you look at like the ID4, compare that against an Ionic 5. Come on, you're not going to buy that over an ID5. I mean, and you know, Ionic 5. And you know that they're struggling to sell them because they're discounting them to some extent. And they were the first ones to discount. Yeah, they were. Even when the market was in the virus. And here's the other, here's the other issue. I think Volkswagen has this problem where they make decisions for the American market in Wolfsburg, right? The people here on the ground, because if they made them here, you know what car should be here? It's not actually a car, it's a truck. If they made them yeah, here. Yeah, the pickup truck. I, I have said this to a bunch of, like the last four VW North American presidents. I said, bring the Amarok over, and within six months, it'll be your best selling vehicle. It would be. Mm-hmm. And they're like, chicken tax, chicken tax. And I'm like, uh, I mean, there's a way to get around the chicken tax. You could but build it in Chattanooga. So that gives us a really good contrast. Look at how Volkswagen now runs their business, over and, and then look at how Hyundai and Kia run their business. One is very localized, and not just the U.S., they're localized in other markets, too. Yeah. Where Volkswagen, they used to be localized, but I feel like as they've grown and become more corporate and have had all these disparate brands, they've made decisions like we're going to double down into EV more than others and not have an option, where Mercedes, their, their, their cross-country rival, they decided we're also going to go 100% EV, but then notice they've recently backpedaled and they said, you know what, we're going to keep internal combustion engine around just a little bit longer and let the market tell us what we're doing. So here's a good example, right? Volkswagen was the first non-American, I think, car company in America. Yep, right? Pennsylvania. Right, so, uh, you know, 75 years of the Beetle, right? And they sell, I want to say, 400,000 units a year or something like that. I mean, Toyota sells small. that many RAV4s. Just RAV4s. And yet they had the first mover advantage. Hey, it's snowing, dude. <laughs> oh, can we just tell them what's the temperature outside in Chicago it's on crazy February seventh? It's like fifty-six degrees. It's crazy warm yeah, right now. But it's snowing inside the Chicago Auto Show. <laughs> so you want to tell them about this car? Uh, no, I don't want to tell them. You about don't this want to talk okay. from pole to pole. Okay, uh, we'll move on. Hey, 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 good, good. Hey, what do we? Yeah, what do you want to show you. them here? Okay, let's show them. Uh, well, let's show them kind of the, uh, uh, the, the the one that this is based on, which is the, the, the yeah, Araya. So this is another one where the execution of this at beautiful car, not the same problem as the ID4. Yeah. Execution beautiful, beautiful drives beautifully. Some of the detail, like Alfonso, who runs design for all of Nissan and Fetty, he knocked it out of the park with this thing. The problem is Too how expensive. much is it? Too yeah. expensive. See, we got <laughs> yeah. there at the same time. Yeah, right. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't qualify for the tax break. You would know better than I. Hmm. How much is the all-wheel drive version? It's like Probably. 60 something grand. Well, starting at 43 right there. That's a two wheel drive with like no I, seats. I, I want to say it's like 60,000. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so for the all wheel drive, it's in the, at least the high 50s. And again, let's go back to the Ionic 5. All wheel drive is 52. Yeah. Now, granted, that's a lot of money, but you're talking eight grand difference. Even at those prices, that's going to move the needle on which one you Shall buy. So we keep moving, Andre? Let's, let's keep heading out. What do you want to go to next? Honda? Yeah, let's go or to Honda. Or there's actually something interesting we can discuss at Honda. Yeah, because I think the, the one that's 
you know, prominently displayed is the new prologue. That yes, it is. That's what I want to discuss with you because that ties into our GM discussion. Yeah. So, as you know, uh, Honda has recently at CES came out with, I would say, what at least 20 cars yep. that they're going to build. But the prologue, the one that is actually coming first, is built in conjunction with GM using the Ultium platform, mm -hmm. uh, which I always like. You know, platform sharing and. Is always, I, I always kind of just shake my head when manufacturers do that. It's like the Supra and you know, Toyota and BMW. This was a diff those are two different cases. In the Supra case, it was your choice is you don't have a sports car at all. I know. Or you share and you get a sports car. But, but, and believe it or not, it's been more successful I, than we, we moto, both believe. Moto man. Dude, I mean, Toyota's big enough where they can make a sports car on their own and even lose money on that car and still be fine. They didn't want to. That was the issue. Mm. Where in this case, this was a case of Honda. Most people think of them, Honda, a great company, and I, I would agree, a great engineering company. But they're not, they weren't big enough, at least resources wise, to get, make the investment. And they wanted not be the second mover advantage, they wanted to be the third mover advantage. So they decided they would basically tiptoe into the EV market by sharing the, uh, the technology with General Motors. So this what clearly has happened, this, that's backfired on. So this, of course, underpins the same platform this is as the Blazer Lyric and, and the Blazer and the other GM uh, But SUVs. what do you think? Is it a good looking car? I, mean, I like the color. Does that, does that answer your question? I, I, think, I think a better way to answer this question is you sent Nathan to drive this car. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, our senior. <laughs> Very senior. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> oh, I uh, get to look at Andre's face. <laughs> I, I personally I, think this is a good-looking car, but th this is where the platform sharing I have a problem with. You look at the switch gear inside this thing, like, and it screams sure. all of General Motors. Uh, the screen, everything. And oh, that yeah. doesn't oh, yeah. fit. That looks, that looks like a Blazer on that the inside. That does not fit with a Honda, man, because Honda's been doing great work on the inside of their cars as of late. Yeah, it, it does. It does. Now that I see it, it does look very much like a blazer. Now let's and now let's bring the conversation back to General Motors. If you think about it, Mary Barra made this huge investment, created this Ultium platform, which is a fancy way of saying how we're organizing the batteries. At the end of the day, no one's buying them. They're having quality control problems. Well, they can't they build can't, them. They can't build them, them and yeah. they can't sell them because they have quality control problems, the ones that they've already built. And now their partner has decided to move on and do something else. P part of that what is, do you think that means for GM as a whole, well, EV well, well, as well as the company? Well, part of that is cars today, of course, are more like phones than they are mobility devices, right? It's a technology that the car manufacturers I disagree are struggling with. You. I think there are two directions there. But I'm saying it's, it's a technology they're struggling with. It's all the the operating system, it's all the code. They're really having a hard time with that. And of course, Apple is going to hopefully solve that issue right with their partnership with Porsche and Aston Martin. So Apple is going to become basically the native system in many cars. And I think that's a good thing because so far, like we were just, we were, so we get this, we're driving here. Yeah. Uh, Stellantis was kind enough to lend us a, a, a Grand Wagoneer. And we were Wait, like, you drove here from Denver? No, from the airport. Okay. Yeah. From, from the Chicago airport. Well, he's done that before. He drove home yeah, to Denver from stupid. Chicago yeah, Auto Show. Four of us. Very right? stupid. Yeah, that's another story. There's a video that you don't want to watch. I don't it. want to smell that car. Yeah, that, that, that video smells. Anyway, so we're like, hey, we just need to get to the Chicago uh, McCormick Place Hyatt. I think it's like McCormick Hyatt, right? Yeah. And we use the voice, and the, and the voice comes out with, there are 36 choices. And we're like, it's the Chicago Hyatt McCormick Place. That option does not exist. It couldn't find it. And Google, you like you type it in, misspell it. You know, you type it in with like your yeah. your toes, and you'll get that. So that goes back to General Motors. What did they decide not to put on their cars moving forward? Well, but that's, that's a whole other reason because they don't want to they don't want to share the data because they want. I understand. They uh, want to they, they want to sell to you. Yeah. Totally get it. Yeah. Totally get it. Oh, did you see recently? Did you drive? It wasn't you who came for the EV9? Uh, uh, who came who for the EV9? Andre? EV9? Huh? Who did the EV9? Who went for EV9? Tommy did. Oh, Tommy, Tommy did, yeah. Tommy yeah. Did so I am, when we talk about General Motors, I basically, love that car. Love that car, oh, yeah. Type R, yeah. I mean, did that, see, now that is not a... That is a Honda. This is a Honda. <laughs> this is not equivalent to a phone. Yeah. This is a device you want to drive. Except my big American, you know what, does not fit very well in the seats. I shouldn't say device. Let me take that back. This <laughs> is a driving experience. This, the GR Corolla, I would argue the GR86, Here's here's you know the, the problem as I get older, this becomes an issue. 
right? Getting, getting, not just getting into it, but getting it. Okay, I just want to point out, he's the one that said he's old. I didn't say it this time. <laughs> you're welcome, Tommy. Hey, but, but there's a, there's a, there's oh, a, and you're getting really old because now your son is going to be married. I know. There's a, there's a contradiction here, though, right? We, I, you, have the money to buy this. Yes. Tommy doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> that's the part that sucks about being young. I would agree. Yeah. He, that's why he's buying crappy old minis and making them and have, trying to get them so he doesn't, they don't leave them on the side of the road. All right. Well, let's talk about okay. uh, your favorite brand here, BMW. Well, not my favorite. All right, Close. Well, you're, you're, what, I don't know Previous what Previous employer is. I'd like to point out. All right. Um, I was just going to make a point about the data. Oh, EV9. Yeah. This is what happens when you get old. You forget. Now, you said it this time. I said it. Yeah. This way, I'm old. So not far from here, believe it or not, a BMW, their entire data services business is in the Boeing building. Oh, cool. It's not in Germany. These are the guys that are dreaming up the stuff in the, in the screens to sell you stuff. And I always thought, who the hell is going to buy anything through a car? Well, Kia came up with an idea, two ideas. Number one, you can buy separate light signatures after the fact. So the lights are there but you can change them and customize the light signatures in a Kia EV9. And number two, you can get a faster zero to 60 time. So where's the Neuer class at? That's a beautiful thing. It's not here. It's I not don't here. think that's beautiful. Do you don't like it? I like okay, it. but this is the general idea. What do you think? And I think this is the second question we throw over to the audience. Look at this daylight opening and the much more narrow C pillar, and then look at the rear three quarter. And by the way, we didn't even say, this is the i5, this is the new five series. Which comes both think? as electric and gasoline power. So that's, okay, well, you're giving away the headline here. Yeah. This is why BMW, I think, is at the forefront of being a car company moving into the next, like, Cars 3.0. Because here's a car where they could have said, just like General Motors, we're going all electric, screw you if you don't like it. These guys said, you know what, we want to live to see another day, so we're going to let the market decide, because at the end of the day, that's the best tool that has moved technology forward. So they've created a platform that has a four-cylinder, a four-cylinder all-wheel drive, an electric rear-wheel drive, all-wheel drive, and then it'll obviously be an M5, and even do an electric wagon. Did you see that? So I have a question. Well, wagons are dead. Toad. No, they're not. They're toad. Definitely. He's an old man. They're Don't dead. listen to him. Yeah, anyway, I have a question for you and BMW, okay? Yeah. Here's the question. Why aren't we in Portugal? <laughs> because the Portugal X2 uh, drive is happening right now. Oh, is now. that what's happening? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, I was BMW, wondering what's, come on, do, yes. do you not, no longer love us? Are yeah, we, exactly. Are, Why are, are we there? We should we be off, there. Are we off the... Are we off the Instead, they decide to send us here so we can look at an X2 on a stand. <laughs> yeah, instead of driving it. Are we off the A-list? I actually profiled... BMW, I actually profiled this car at the Japanese Motor Show. You did? Yeah, I did, at the Tokyo Motor Show. And yet, here I am, and not in Portugal. You at harm to your health. <laughs> you harmed your physical health by doing that. I did. Yeah, go and on. this is the thanks you get. Yes. So uh, look, I, I, here's here's my take on BMW. Um, I'm kind of confused because there are so many choices now. There's so many grills, right? There's so many there's so many different names and numbers. I'm kind of confused about where the brand is. Maybe I'm just getting old, and maybe I'm getting cranky. Once upon a time, it was three, five, seven series. Right now, yeah. it's just it's just overwhelming. So this is not a you thing. This is not you getting old. Yeah. BMW, I would argue, like Audi, is trying to develop the fine art of slicing the pizza so thin. I agree. So they had an X3, they had an X5, and they had an X, and then they added the X7. Then they went back and said, no, we need a coupe version of the X1, so they made the X2. Then they were like, we need a coupe version of the X4, of the X3, so we made the X4. And I feel like they're slicing and dicing it too much to the point where you have I think almost, Mercedes is the same thing. Mercedes I think they've is starting to pull back from yeah, that. Yeah, because it, it. it doesn't pencil out is the reality. But let's, let's, again, let's pose a question to the audience. Who's making the right choice here? General Motors by going all in to EV, which obviously they're backing off on now, or Toyota, or in this case, this like middle approach that BMW has done where I'm gonna show you two different examples. That and that, two different platforms, but from the get-go was engineered gas and electric. Who's making the right choice here? I'm, I'm, I, I'm not gonna answer this question, but I'm gonna say there's not a lot of people here. Well, not a lot of people. Right, this right. is a media day. Let's yeah, go this still. way because we have to show something. Well, no, I want to show the, the only unveiling here. Oh, okay. Yeah, because uh -huh. I think, you, so when I, you know, we've been doing this, what, over 10 years now? 15, I think. But Roman I'm, and I have been doing this for 15 years. 
I've yeah. known this guy 15 years. So, so when we used to come here, there would be an unveiling every hour, right? Yep. It was like bam, bam, bam. For two was, days. For two days. And Chicago is always a truck show. There were new trucks. I believe today there's only two new cars. And I say new because they're just refreshed. Mm. They're not actually new, but we're going to show them to you. Um, and these are the new vehicles that were actually unveiled there. And I think that's because of COVID. I think car companies are no longer... Uh, you know, putting as much money into auto shows. It's a shame because this always was one of my favorite. Speaking of money, do you want to put some money on the line and do a contest for the audience? Give them a prize if they guess some trivia? I don't think putting money on the line. How about giving away a t-shirt? <sighs> then I gotta send it, it's a pain how about, in the butt. How about a signed t-shirt from Nathan, Andre, and Tommy? Not you. Okay, what's the How question? about that? Okay, this is the trivia contest and you have to answer well, the, the winner will be announced the hottest three Lexus. days. That is the hottest Lexus. The hottest Lexus. No, the hottest Lexus is the LC500 convertible. Well, yeah, Come on. No, no one's buying this that. is the second hottest. No, this is the hottest. This, this, it's cool looking. buying this. This is a new GX. Uh, you can tell uh, that this, of course, is now the most off-road worthy one, the Overtrail. Would you, were you on that program? Did you get no. to drive it? So uh, we just, me and Tommy got to drive it. Uh, it's amazing. It's just amazing. Once again, leaning into the off-road. I think it's so good looking. I love the design. I love the purposeful design. And I love the separation they made from the Land Cruiser of this. But back to the trivia contest. All right, what's the trivia contest? So for the avoidance of doubt. How come you giving away stuff for me? Because Why don't you, you give them a sign? Because I only own one car. You own like eight cars. That's the difference. If only. If only, exactly. <laughs> okay, what's um, the trivia here's, contest? Here's the trivia question. All right. What incredibly important sports car was introduced at the Chicago Auto Show, number one. And number two, if you could tell us the year it was introduced, even Roman will sign your shirt. Yeah, no, I don't know what you, I don't know what the car is, but I don't yes, even know. Yes, you do. I do. And I'm not gonna say it on camera, but don't that's a trivia contest. Right. And the we will pick the winner three days after this video goes live. All right. We will pick the, the winner. The Fisker. <laughs> he, did, have we told you that he's old? Like he's losing his mind completely. Maybe, what, you know what? You hold the, the camera and Andre will talk from now on. Wasn't the Fisker? Oh, sorry. Okay, so I, this is a TFL t-shirt. I don't care what t-shirt it is. It's just going to be signed by Andre, Tommy, and Nathan. If you get the second question, Roman signs it as well. All right, so here is uh, the unveiling. And of course, we're looking at, well, you can't see it, but you'll, we'll see it in a second, the brand new Kia Carnival, which is now a hybrid. Yes. To compete with uh, the Pacifica. Really, I say compete with the Toyota. Yeah, sure, Sienna. Did you, okay, should tell the audience, yeah. how much do these things cost? Ooh, they're not cheap, dude. They're not cheap. <laughs> they're not cheap, they're like 50, 60K, they're not. Like when I see people in these things, I'm like, man, that's a rich person there. Well, so, uh, get this. I was in Japan. Habibi. You know, and I know that. Assalamu alaikum. Hey, how are you? How are you? Good, how are you? Sorry, we're recording. This is the so, man yeah, behind the scenes at yeah. Kia. The man behind the mask. Yes. Yeah. So, so not, not that we Masala. want to ignore Masala. you. Masala. So I was in Japan, and this, and this is obviously different, Korean Japan, right? It, they can't put them together. But in Japan, there's this whole culture of having very, like, Rolls Royce like minivans. Absolutely. Like the Alphard, uh, Alphard yeah. right? Which is a Toyota. And it's Toyota, just, and then there was what, the LM or something like that? They're just something. incredibly spectacular in terms of the amount of luxury these things have. There's somebody in this one, maybe we could Let's show, show them the front because yeah. that's the big difference yeah. here. At least from design, what they did is they've adapted the updated, what do they call this, like opposites united, some stupid marketing term. But I gotta say it's a good looking front end. A long time ago, it was, wasn't it a tiger? It still has the tiger nose, yeah. that's it. Yeah. And then they have it up here as well. Yeah. Yeah. And then Andre, show them the back. The back's changed as well. So what they've done is the taillights kind of used to be here and now they go all the way across and they've cleaned it up, made it a little bit more vertical over here. So this, this is the internal combustion engine. Version so this one won't have the fancy dash? Oh, it does, no, it does. It's so they've it. changed the dash so it's got the same effective screen as the Sorento, the EV9. Basically, this is not, they, they sell it as a feature. I would call this a cost cutting thing. Because think about it, it's the same screen that goes in all the cars. Yeah, but look at the back seat. Look, 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 let me, you want, want to jump in and demonstrate, or should I? Well, yeah, why don't you go in because you're right. taller. Look, look, so I we're mean, really going to demonstrate it's, this it's thing. Got, it, I think this comes out, right? Go to the other seat, and I'll get to the other. I'll get to this Oh, right, great. So you're going to make me lie down, huh? Absolutely. Uh, actually, it's not bad. You want to finish the video by yourself? <laughs> I could take a little bit of a nap. He is getting old, so he uh, does need to take some breaks. I like this, too. I've got my own little... Sunroof. So you get a sunroof. It yeah. is comfortable. I'll give you that. I personally just, 
this okay you guys know if you know me you know i'm a massive car guy and like and i'm into totally impractical cars to me a minivan says to the world this is an automotive equivalent to stretch pants it says to the world you've given up you just needed that extra waistline oh that is so cool. you can literally just get out and let is, your belly that, 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 hang what oh man that is harsh it's the truth am i wrong you're wrong you are wrong because there is nothing more utilitarian and practical than a minivan that's the problem right if you if you have kids and you got to put car seats in here you've got dogs and you've got go to soccer practice and you've got all those orange slices there's nothing better than this see i'm that guy that likes different tools yeah. so like i want the sports car and then for the if i was a practical human being i would get a station wagon for the kids and then I would buy myself uh, a cheap pickup oh, truck. Station wagons are cool, but they're just, I mean, compared to this, look at the room in here. You could use this to move construction equipment. <laughs> you can use this to move the kids. He is really getting old. No, not. Point. No, they're just, yeah, they're, they're, you know, they're just. Uh, now, I joke. We joke around, but at the end of the day, he's right. These are more practical. There are less people like me who would do the different tools for different jobs, and they would just want the Swiss Army knife, which this thing is. And then, of course, he has the other new car, which Sofian is is uh, now filming. Sofian's going to film and take our car. Yeah, yeah. He's, I'll have to kick him out. Oh, what do you think of the green calipers? I didn't see them. Check them out. Ooh, they're taking a page out of the Porsche book. Is this a hybrid? This, I don't know. I, I, I wasn't here. Sofian would know. He's he's actually reviewing it. We're just yeah. staring at it. What do you think? It's the new K5. It will update it. I actually, when this came out, I was yeah. like, wow, really good design. The K K5 GT, really great driving car. I would argue between the two, I like the Hyundai version better, the GT, whatever they call it, the N-Line. But the one with the, the 275 horsepower engine, yeah. the N-Line. Um, both are great cars. This one, I felt they dropped the ball. They could have had more differentiation, and Andre showed them. This is a trunk. It should have been a five-door hatchback, and that would have been a good differentiator between the two. So here's another problem, right? These are sexy cars, but the sexy of these, I think, was a Stinger. It's dead, gone, right? I because mean, it was 52 grand. Uh, 35, you got this when it first came out. No one bought out. the four-cylinder. Yeah. You know yeah. what? I famously, in my episode, which did crazy views, yeah. um, I said when that car came out, the Stinger GT is a great car, but no one's going to buy a $50,000 Kia. Everyone's going to buy the four-cylinder. It's going to be a great car. And I was so wrong. It was the exact opposite. I just think between these two, the one that's going to sell is the Carnival. I think this, this, form, oh, absolutely. Fa this form factor is just no longer and this involved. is not just Kia that has that problem. I know, everybody's everybody got that problem. problem. Yeah, but I would argue Kia, Toyota, the folks that are staying in the stand industry, they're smart because they're hedging their bets. How much time do we have? Where are we at, Mr. We're at 43 minutes. Well, do you want to... Uh... So there's some stuff I want to show you there, but I think to, to, to discuss the state of the industry, we have to show them something else. All right, else. Well, let's start over here, and then we'll end up over at the end. Like I think we should end up over here because it's the exciting stuff over it's here. here. Oh, you I just don't want to walk as much. I don't want to walk. It's, just not, it's not an exciting end at the end. Over there. It's okay. It's okay. okay. Pete, you look. This is. I know this is more your audience than our audience. Let's go see Teresa. All right. See what she has why, to say. Why, why is this like cordoned off? What are we? Because do? this. Okay. This is a good what? example of what's going on in the industry. So you see this display here. Andre showed them this display and Subaru and Lexus. That's all corporate. Those are displays that are funded and designed and put on by the car company. This can, is a local I, dealer. Can I tell you something? Yes, sir. That looks expensive and cool. <laughs> this looks cheap and lame. It's just like, we're going to keep the, the peasants out by walling off these very expensive cars. Okay. As opposed to putting them on a pedestal and Does making Does that mean we one. can't let Andre come in? <laughs> Andre can come okay. in. Okay. Hi again. All right. Well, yeah, well, look at that. We're getting ourselves yes. in. Yes. They let the peasants in like you. They let the peasants in. All right. So, so a couple things to point out here. Yeah. Number one was the thing we already just talked about. This is a deal. Can I make you jealous? Did you make me jealous? No, I want to make you jealous. You know, I went to Rome and drove the Revolto. Did you yeah, drive the Revolto? Actually, that, that was insulting. Yes, I was jealous. <laughs> I'm watching like, why would they send him? A, he doesn't know how to drive. I don't B, doesn't know, know anything about the car. No one watches those kind of cars. Well, in this I, video. I, I learned a lot about it. I bet you did. I did, yeah. I would have learned more. <laughs> okay, speaking of Lamborghini. Hold, hold on. You know, people may think of me as, you know, the, 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 the stupid. Neanderthal? Uh, yeah, but, but yeah. I, I have a side of me that loves exotics. You know, I, I was still a kid once upon a time. Oh, actually, even today, <laughs> Roman, I, I mean, you guys know, we've known each other 15 years. We, our, our job is to literally joke around with each other. But at the end of the day, I have a lot of respect for this guy because we both turned our passion into our business. But if you notice, even... A guy who's practical, he's got a wife, he's got a kid, now granted he's older, 
still you love sports cars. Oh, God, yeah. That's yeah. never changed no. throughout all your years of having I, even I, a younger I have, kid. I have, though, unlike you maybe, have learned to love trucks. I'm not saying you don't love trucks, but your passion is still here. It's still here. It's I don't so, have a need for a truck. So, That's the thing. So for me, like a TRX or a Raptor R is as exciting as any of the vehicles here. If not more. Don't do it for me. To me. You know what's more exciting? Not that I don't like trucks. What's more exciting to me is that Land Cruiser. Okay. I would rock that Land Cruiser I, all day Andre, long. What's, Andre, here, hold on. Here, I'll let you. I don't want to do something. What's, what, what are you? You're the truck guy. So what's more exciting to you? This Lamborghini or a TRX or a Raptor R? A Lamborghini truck. <laughs> Right. Do they you make know, one? That Rambo is, of Rambo. course, the Russian answer. <laughs> oh, the Cullinan truck. Is there a Cullinan truck? Okay, I have a theory about the Cullinan, and my theory well, is... The answer would be Neva. If you were to give a three-year-old a crayon and say, draw me a car, yep. you would get a Cullinan. Or a Cybertruck. Yeah, the Cullinan. Or a Cybertruck. <laughs> <laughs> the Cullinan is... Not uh, a fan. Don't yeah. get me wrong, I love, I love right. certain right, Rolls so, Royce. So what are you trying to tell us okay, about the Okay, so industry? a couple of things yeah. here. Anyway... Can I finish with my yeah, compliment? Go, 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 go. This guy, he's like, he's ADD. He goes in so many different directions. So my compliment was, here's a guy that turned his, his passion into a, to, into a really thriving business, but all through the twists and turns of his career, always had a sports car. So that was the thing I think that was pretty cool. Yeah. Why you're totally, you're a car guy. That's your street guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. Now back to throwing him under the bus. So with this. <laughs> I've only seen two of these. This is the this is the updated or the revised new Countach. I've only seen two of them ever in my life, and they're both at the Chicago Auto Show in yeah. our video from last year. Yeah, they they, they were unveiled uh, at Pebble Beach right two years ago. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. If I remember right. Uh, there's only two cars here not for sale. These two. Okay. They're both. I think the owner is keeping these, not selling. This is the Sterato. So this is like the. Dakar version of the Lamborghini Oticon. It's the last run of the Oticons. They made only 1,500 of them. They all sold all right, out. All right, question for you. This is for you. Yes, sir. This or the Porsche 911 Dakar? If you had to choose one. I mean, you know the answer. That's going to be a Dakar. Dakar. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, let's yeah. have a quick conversation about something. Yes. All right. Uh, we were talking about this yesterday, right? Yes. I think the best car, that the best 911 right now is not the ST, not the GT3. Not the Heritage Edition. Excuse me, of course. Not the GT3 Touring. Of course it's the GT3 Touring. Touring. I think it's the Dakar because it's the most approachable and the most drivable and the most usable. Right? You no. can get into the Dakar and it's got all the portionness that you love, but it's comfortable and it's drivable and yet at the same time it's still exotic and my cool. retort to you would like be a TRX. My retort to you would be a career T. It's the yeah. most approachable, it's the most drivable. Yeah, you got, I think it's the best value. Dude, oh, here's the problem with the career T, right? Come to my house. Doesn't have the front lift. You're gonna scrape it it's right away. It's not designed for you. No, I'm just saying. There's it, rare it, people it's, it's, that are. No one's gonna buy a car like that and drive it all winter in Colorado. They're just not. You're the only person that will do that. And now to that point, this car here, the Sterato. Yeah. I thought it would be a stupid thing, but then I drove it and I realized, a, it's the best road-going Lamborghini, What's better than what, the Urus. Like the car. But that's different in the Porsche world, because a 911 is a great regular daily I just this wasn't and then there's a second mode in this car the rally mode the rally mode is it's like a Lamborghini from 1983 it's look trying at, to look, kill look, you look at the tires that's what makes it so cool you know to me a Lamborghini with off-road tires look at those look at those treads on that I thing. think this is your Colorado side talking you know what we'll throw this to the audience what do you think is the best so, distillation of a of a Lamborghini and a Porsche right now how so, about that so to me like a lot of these cars are sold based on FOMO right First, the, the 992 comes out, everybody's like, oh, I gotta have the 992, right? And then the GT3 comes out, and you gotta go, oh, I gotta have the, it's the greatest ever. And then if you don't like the. This is an STO, also, this is the. Right. right. This I is the greatest ever. I, I, I drove the STO. I drove it on track, actually. We both drove it. Yeah, so, yeah, so and then, you know, and then, like, oh my God, I gotta have the GT3 RS, I gotta have the 911 ST. Uh, and I'm just saying, I think all these cars are race cars for the road and the only ones that aren't are the off-roady ones and that's why i think they're the best because they're the most daily drivable they're the swiss army knife of these cars and to me you know i love like like we just drove that st right in the canyons about Malibu. stunning when car. you're on that thing it's incredible but then i parked it turned it off and i went like <sighs> because it's so nervous it's so high strung it's so like uh, okay this is where you're dead wrong. Sure, we and this go, is where going. it's like, this is like me trying to tell you about an F-150. Okay. The 911 ST, yeah. totally not nervous at all. It's actually the opposite. That has slower steering because it doesn't have rear wheel steering. They had to recalibrate the front steering. The car, the only thing that, get, that makes it feel more of a race car than a GT3 is the transmission because it's rattly. 
It's got that lightweight flywheel and lightweight let's, clutch. Let's, let's, I don't we got to go one more down here. Hang on, you guys see yeah. Rolls Royces, dude? It's it's got it's got no sound deadening, so you hear everything. But that's the charm of that car. No, I don't, I don't want. I, you know, I remember the two Jasons talking about it's the greatest car ever because you can hear the uptake in the transmission. I'm like, there's just some sounds that aren't. That's great. the one thing I don't like is the sound of the transmission. Yeah, I don't like. That. I don't want to hear it. And that's why I like my car better than that car. Mm -hmm. But the point of these, like the, the cars, it's yeah. not about drivability. It is about what you just said. It's about, it's we're closing the window, and oh, by, you better get one now, you better get one now, because we're never going to make one again. That's the point. So the EV rolls This up. is something different. So let's go back to the BMW group. Yes. Remember we were talking about how there's different strategies. There's GM, we're going all in on EV, and there's Toyota, nope, we're sticking with hybrids. Then there's these guys, let's make a platform that can do both. This is the last version of BMW's move to EV. So they started with BMWs and if you remember their first versions were basically they were like science experiments with the i3 uh, the and the i so and notice gorgeous. for this one it's shorter they had to change the coefficient of drag so they had to redesign the spirit okay, of ecstasy. It, what do we have there's one company that should have gone electric first it's this. No right. yes. totally disagree no because one wants an electric Rolls Royce. Well no I'll tell you why first of all if you really buy a Rolls Royce you're not going to be driving it it's about the passenger experience. Maybe this one, right? But most Rolls Royces, you're going to sit in the back seat, be driven around town. And even Rolls Royces, like the average Rolls Royce owner drives their car like 40 miles through middle of London or. Okay, so let's get back to the. You're getting kind of the point, of, the, you're you getting see, you the point of what I was trying to say. Okay. So BMW, they started with the i4s, the i8s, excuse me, I, the i3s and the i8s. And then that was a science experiment. Then they finally came out with the iX yep. and the i4. Great execution of a XM. BMW first. And that's different. That's a hybrid. <laughs> then they came out with the i4 and the iX, and now the i5, and they are probably the best driving EVs out there. This is the same logic applied to the Rolls Royce world, and I would argue they did two things going on here. Number one, they said, okay, we're going to do EV, and you're right. They don't care about the driving experience. Most, the average Rolls Royce owner has five cars, so they don't care it only has 260 miles of range. But what's important here, the thing they're not telling you, notice, it's not a phantom electric. It's not a ghost electric. Right. They came up with a completely different car Beautiful. because they wanted to test it somewhere else first. Think of this as like the Oldsmobile of the Rolls Royce world. Because remember when GM had Oldsmobile, all the stuff that they tried out, they tried an Oldsmobile because if it failed, no one cared about Oldsmobile. So they came out with a car no one's ever heard of. Now granted, it is beautiful. You need to see it in person to understand its beauty. And you also need to see it in person to understand its size. Most people think this is an electric Wraith. It turns out it is four inches longer in wheelbase than a Wraith and five inches longer this, than this a Wraith. This would dwarf the Carnival. What's that? This would dwarf the Carnival. It dwarfs the Carnival, carnival yeah. yeah. And, and, it also has, believe it or not, largest wheels ever fitted to a Rolls Royce, including the color. What, what size is it? 23s no, from the factory. There's a car here with bigger ones. No, no, I'm from saying, the factory. There's a, there's a car here with bigger ones Aftermarket. from the factory. No, from Rolls, for Rolls Royce. No, I'm saying here, there's a vehicle here that Which from car? the factory. I'll show you. We're well, gonna it's not through. a Rolls Royce. It's the not point Rolls is, Royce. this no. is for Rolls Royce. But I'm saying they were up by okay, a, He's being pedantic now. No, I'm not. They yeah. were, there's, there's bigger wheels here. Anyway, you smell that? That's money. money. That's the smell of money, right? Well, that's why that sells. Did, did you? But do you like it? I what love do you think it. of the design? Yeah, I love I it. I think it's a stunningly beautiful. It's not good in white. The one they gave me was a stunning, like bluish gray silver. It was gorgeous. I love it, but Rolls Royce hates us for some reason. <laughs> they they uh, will not give us cars. Probably they used to give us cars. Car. Okay. Okay, so here's the thing. Okay, okay. You got to go to Rome to drive the Lamborghini. I got to drive no, no, the Spectre. I'm not, I'm not jealous. I'm just saying you think that there are, in Texas, no truck owners that also own Rolls Royces. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, so, I mean, come on. Like, it, it, that's a very, see, I think, I, narrow vision of their This base. is where I see Rolls Royce. Strategically, they made a bad decision. Granted, don't get me wrong. BMW, I think, is, is on fire when it comes to their rollout of EVs because they realize the business to stay in business, you need gasoline and hybrids. However, if any brand could get away with crazy at the forefront technologies, meaning let's take one of these companies that's working on solid state batteries, maybe they're not totally ready for commercialization, but let's try it at least. You could do that in a Rolls Royce and get away with it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with you on that. Of course, I now I feel a bit more at home with uh, the collection of Jeeps that we're walking next to? Well, this gets to a point I wanted to share with you guys. And that is? The size of this show. Tell them about the difference in the size of the show. Yeah, so this is weird. So, I don't know if you were at breakfast today? Yes. 
So there used to be two halls. There used to be two halls that um, the Chicago Auto Show would occupy. Now it's down to one hall. But at breakfast this morning, they said even though it's down to one hall, it's actually bigger because there's more square feet in this one hall than there were previously in the two halls. I don't believe that at all. I agree. It doesn't make sense, but that's what they said. I'm just reporting. I, I, I think you're right. So the other thing that kind of ties on to that, yeah. it's not just that you have less automotive uh, exhibitors and you have less space, but notice what exhibitors they're putting in their place. The Illinois Tollway is here. <laughs> it's they a cool even, truck, dude. <laughs> but they <laughs> even right. have the Illinois DMV here. And then I got to show, I, you're going to have to give me some leeway. I, I got to show you something that is going to be a favor for me and Nathan. Come oh, over here. Hold on, come on. Look how cool this is. You got a plow here. You got a plow here. This is a cool truck. And you wonder why this guy didn't like the Rolls Royce. <laughs> what do you think, Andre? Yes. Andre says yes. Yes. <laughs> he does. Yeah. I'll cool. admit it's a cool, totally cool so, truck. Hey, hey, but the point is, they can't sell the space. That's right. the point. Right. So but, they're giving it away to the government businesses within here, here's Illinois. Another, here's another point that I would love to make, right? Yeah. The technology in a truck, this one for instance, is just as interesting and just as lovable and just as fascinating as the technology in that Rolls Royce. And the problem is people who usually drive Rolls Royces don't yeah. understand that, that there's other forms of vehicles that are just as technological. Oh, I cool. totally agree. Yeah. yeah. So. That's why, it's part of the reason why I'm into trucks. This is what I wanted to show you. This is the favorite spot for me, Andre, and Nathan. First time I've ever seen a mobile <laughs> cigar lounge in a car show. Let's just keep going, Andre. Nathan, you got to fly in tonight. Oh We're going god. here tomorrow. Oh my god! All right, let me show you the one. Can you guess what vehicle has the bigger wheels in that Rolls Royce? Twenty-four is from the factory. Oh, Cadillac Escalade. Exactly. You got yeah. it. Yeah, you nailed it. Dude. I gotta tell you, it's good looking. I love it. Let's go look at it. Let's go look at it. It it's, is good looking. It's one hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars, though. For, okay. In all seriousness. Do you think that's a bridge too far? I don't know. Cadillac and GM in general are just are just like, you know, they're building cars now that are almost bespoke in some ways. You know, they're, they're, they're kind of entering that like... But this I, is not bespoke like the Celestique. This no, is a no, truck. But, but still, it's, you know, it's pretty damn nice. Well, can, and how many of those can you sell and how much money can you make selling them? Hey man, if they're going to make money on it, great. I love... Okay. You guys might think that he and I are bashing on EVs. We're not. I'm a big, I love EVs for no other reason than you have a car where you don't have to spend any time looking for energy just, throughout the day at all. Now I'm you can interrupt, interrupt just me. Just for a second. Just for a second. Just trying to make an Look at the two most too. interesting cars here with people around them. First, the Cadillac that we're walking to, and then over there, the Cybertruck. Cyber truck. That tells you a lot. Tells about you everything. I yeah. agree. Totally Sorry, agree. Go ahead. Um, the point I was making, we are not. Like again, you, peep, you guys might think we're bashing EVs, we're not. We are a huge fan of EVs, the cars themselves. It's the struggle of how it's been rolled out and the government mandates and no attention paid to the infrastructure and the grid issues. But the technology like this is fantastic. And one of the things that's really unique about this, he, this is a graphic example of General Motors being in the business of having a car that they can actually take one platform and make four different, completely different bodies. Because if you think about it, the technology that's going in to make this, that underpinned the Hummer EV. Granted, it didn't work out so well for you guys. Then they shorten it and they make this. Then they make it a bit different. You're going to have an upcoming uh, version of much fancier Buick. So that's where I think there's a benefit for these platforms. So this, this gentleman right here, that you just walked by us. You're the engineer of, the, of this, right? You're the. I was on the team. Yeah. So yeah. Th this is the only company here. That I, don't, I, don't, I can't be. You can't be. Oh, okay. I totally understand. <laughs> We want to do an interview. Donnelly is our spokesperson, oh, but we'll need hey, to try and set up some timers. Yeah, no, no worry about it. I was going to say, it's one yeah. of the few companies here that actually is engineers at the show. And then, of course, that message just got completely shut down. <laughs> Funny how that happens. Yeah, <laughs> yeah what's well, a little bit behind the scenes, what, what you guys don't see is... Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. What, Thank what you. you guys don't seem to understand, or I shouldn't say don't, you probably do understand. You deal with it in your own world. You know how, like... Uh, you have corporate politics that you have to deal with because you go into a cube every day or go into your office every day. You might think we have it made. That, like he's in Colorado driving cars off road, and I'm in the Malibu Mountains driving cars, screaming down the road. We still have our politics to deal with, politics. and you just saw it. Yeah, yeah, of <laughs> yeah. course. Yeah. Um, you want to go back down there and go yeah. by the Cybertruck? Let's go by the Cybertruck. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll finish we'll up there. there. Yeah. And this, while we're walking there, let's point out this is one of the benefits of having no exhibitors. You can actually have a test track. And 24s. That's incredible. Let's throw another question at the audience. What do they think of the design of that thing? I think it, 
if I'm not mistaken, 400 miles of range. Huge, but a 200 kilowatt hour battery. Yeah, crazy big battery. Kind of the other thing I think is fascinating, and you guys don't see this until you see it in person, the car, it looks big, yeah, in, on video, but when you see it in person, you look at the daylight opening and how narrow it is, it makes it look like a station wagon almost. It's You're got right. like a more sinister profile. 53 inch screen from wing mirror crazy, to wing mirror. Man. I gotta tell you, that's another thing. So, GM is taking it as an opportunity to kind of up their game. Like the build quality of a Cadillac only from a couple of years ago, not great. You look at the inside of that thing, granted that's a prototype, it's still actually pretty good. What do you think of Lucid's here too? Lucid is good, I gotta tell you, I'm a little bit biased because Derek Jenkins, good friend of mine, he runs design for this company, and I think he knocked out of the park with the design. What do you think? I think they need an SUV like yesterday. Well, it's coming. Yeah, I know. They already know. showed it. So let's not do the truck because we've done the truck on the pot, uh, but let's do the new uh, Model 3 Highland. The updated yeah. Model 3, yeah. Yeah, let's look at that because it's, it's also interesting that for the first time, actually, Tesla's showing up at these auto shows because for the longest, they did not spend any time, energy, or effort on journalists, yeah. let alone auto shows. That's what happens when sales slow down. Yeah. I think it's a good thing. You start to, prices come down. Yes. And you start to see people being a little bit more flexible. Yeah. Yeah. So um, what do you think? You like it? Um, I got to tell you, I've never was a big fan of this design. Uh, I can see why they stuck with the general shape of the car, because the tooling has been paid for, and that's what's paying for all these reductions in price, which make the car much more competitive. There are things that, are like, to me, are like one bridge too far, and that is like no turn signals. You know, I think that's ridiculous. Yeah, no windshield wiper stock. It just makes it makes it more cool, but see, less this is useful. Andre, follow me into here. I do like this blue line. That's cool. So. I totally get, I'm, I am OCD, I love the minimalist design of you see in a lot of different cars, but at some point, you're taking it a bridge too far where you're trying to reinvent the wheel, where Germans, they go in a direction where they add complexity for the sake of complexity. Here, they're taking away so much, and I would argue it takes away from the safety of driving. The fact that you're gonna be in this thing and you're fooling with these signals here, I don't care, even after on the car for a couple of years, if you're in, a, if you're in an emergency situation, You've had what, in your case, 20, 30, 40 years of programming of doing this. It, that doesn't make any sense. Uh, 20 years. 20 years, yeah. And then everything being on the screen, that's a huge point we've learned over the years. Where your finger goes, that's where your eyes go. So if I'm looking here and I start fooling with it here, then I'm taking my eyes off the road. Now before you guys jump into the comments and rip me apart, you're gonna say, oh, but there's voice, there's voice. The reality is, voice isn't ready for big time yet to deal with the safety of piloting a 3500 or like in this case 5000 pound car it keeps being very uh, over you know there's that thing you want to under promise and overperform voice controls have for the last 20 totally years totally under delivered the, yeah been the opposite over promise of, under deliver over, or yeah. under promise over deliver yeah. if you i mean we're old enough to remember this 3com invented that yeah. they invented that saying by you know what we came out with a device that does three things only and that's it and it was called the palm pilot and that basically launched the t the, the phones you see today yeah nowadays i i, I know siri you know, is there, but it's still, it, we're still not, not there. Maybe. It's not ready for big time, I yeah. would agree. Yeah. And granted, it's getting better, like the processing Everything power is, better, yeah. has increased, the speed's better, but it's still not to the point where I would put my life in its hands. Which is what you're doing. Yes. Well guys, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Moto Man, for taking the time. Thanks for and having me. And sharing your conversation with me. Thank you, Andre, for uh, you know being behind the camera. Uh, for this hour and as always if you guys want to see full coverage from tfl go to alltfl.com and if you want to see more of moto man head on over to moto man tv on all socials and all platforms there you go you get the cute dog too so look at that dog oh sadly i lost kuma last oh. year yeah 50, he was like 17. a beautiful dog yeah although uh, riley was just on my most recent episode there you go. beautiful golden retrieve riley yeah see you guys next time ciao